Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here. So, um, every day in the afternoon I usually take a tea break. <laughs> I'm in Britain, why wouldn't I take a tea break? And I usually sit down and watch a friend of mine um, who makes a daily video and that's Gail Augusta Nalini. And Gail, I so apologise that I probably pronounced that hideously, but I'm sure you'll survive, as we all, but I love Gail's work. It's it's just fun to see someone having fun, relaxed and enjoying and being creative. Now, yesterday she launched the second part of a video called Mixed Media Cardboard Cover and it was continued. And in there she actually did a really nice um, page for a hole punch journal. So I've recreated this one. So this is what she did. Gail made it so that the page had a pocket space for a larger pocket. And then on the other side, there was a tuck spot. Now, when Gail did it, Gail's working on a binder or a journal at the moment that has three hole punches in it to be fitted in. It was a single page and I absolutely love this. Now, I don't know whether someone has done one of these in the past or whether this is originally Gail's, but I always feel credit where credit was due. And I learned this off Gail and I absolutely love this and it's going to become a standard in the thing I do. And I'm now going to nickname this. Gail's pocket and tuck page or Gail's PT page. So Gail, if you're listening or watching, you can now stop laughing because you now have a page or a pocket named after you. So Gail's PT page has now come into existence. So the challenge for me was how would I make this into something I can put into a signature because I very rarely do cinch folders or hole punch folders. I nearly always do journals that have actually got signatures. So I took this and actually did some playing and I managed to come up with this. So again, we have the place for a pocket here. We have the tuck spot here. We have another pocket here and another tuck spot here. Now, so if I want to actually put it into a signature, I could quite easily slot it in and it's done and I have it. And I think this is probably going to become a standard item in my journal. So love the idea. So let's put that to one side because I'm going to show you how to make the single one and how I made this. Um, but as always, I want you to take a look at the original now because I've got a funky accent. I want to make sure everyone knew exactly where I got this from. So take a screenshot of this, guys, because it was inspired by Gail Agostolini's, and I do hope I pronounced that right, YouTube video. The video entitled was Mixed Media Cardboard Cover Continued. It was on the 26th of August, 2019. I only put the date in because I have no idea when someone might watch this in the future. And look for the timestamp, about 48 minutes and 20 seconds, and that's where she did it. So I'll put this up at the end anyway. So, right, let's just make a quick one. So I've taken a piece of paper, piece of card. Now this card stock is from a 12 by 12 piece of card stock or paper stock. Um, I've cut it down so the height of mine is about seven and a quarter because that's the journal I'm working on at the moment. Now my page sizes are four and a half inches across. So I wanted this to be longer than a double, obviously. So four and a half from four and a half makes nine. Then I've got three inches left over at the end. So I want to make sure it was longer than my page size, although I could fold it. I'm not going to harp on too much about the sizes and dimensions because every one of us will be doing different um, journals or different applications for this. So let's bring in my good old scoreboard. So pop it down there. Let's just make sure there's no pattern on the other side. I have to really consider there isn't. So I'm going to come into four and a half. Four and a half is my page size. I'm going to come in and I'm going to fold that one over. Give it a bit of a bone tool. And then I'm going to put it back on the scoreboard. Come back to four and a half. Lift that flap out the way just in case I run over the top of it. And then I'm going to fold this in the opposite direction. So as you can see, it's a really, really simple concept. As a single page, it was absolutely fabulous. Now you could chop that off if you wanted to make it shorter. I don't mind being it that far over. It depends on how you want to do it. So when I looked at this, as you can see, it's almost a seven. So for me, it's about three and a half. Oops, helped to click the pen, Griffiths. Three and a half, and I flip it over, and I do about three and a half there. 
Now I've put the marks on because I like every tuck spot I do or every pocket I do to have a little bit of a hole punch in it just as a grab spot. Click that round, sorry for the loud noises. Click that round. Now, what Gail did on hers was Gail actually then took her sewing machine and she sewed along that edge, sewed along that edge. Obviously she used vintage photo, because Gail always uses vintage photo and I love you for that Gail. So, and then she sewed along there and along there and on my one I didn't actually sew on my one which is slightly different dimension I actually just glued it and I used some fabric tack there and there and along there and there remember this is a pocket so you don't need to glue under there can be sewn I would have sewn but I thought what if you don't have a sewing machine so that's how I made this so I thought right how am I going to make this to a double page so let's put this to one side now I've got papers of the same dimension as the previous one so I'm going to come in and I'm going to repeat the same exercise so I'm going to come to four and a half I'm going to score fold over this is a bit thinner than the other one I did which is fine come in to four and a half again lift it up oops slipped out of my grip there you go and give it a four and a half and I'm going to fold it back that's that one done and then come in and do exactly the same with the other one I do love this paper I wish I could remember where I got this one from to be honest it's just really pretty oh I don't think I scored that very well there you go so that gets folded in on itself bit of a line along there turn it around so my four and a half is dictated by my page width so both that dimension and that dimension are dictated by the journal I am creating. Okay, guys? So, as I said, you can make them exactly this size if you want, or you can make them whatever size you wish. Now, another thing I did like about these was I could quite easily have one of these freestanding and just tucked into my journal, and I could actually have mounted um, this onto maybe a piece of uh, paper in the middle so that this would then became a flap in its own so if this was actually a journal page it could flap open um, so anyway lots of possibilities and I think that's why I liked this one a lot so let's get rid of my scoreboard because that's no longer needed so I have got my two identical bits of paper I put them together now I'm going to come in and I know it's about three and a half I'm looking for so one two three three and a half put this round so I didn't realize I was on the side of the screen not the middle of the screen um, one two three and a half there I'm going to take my circle punch not an exact science I'm not bothered about it I'm just coming in watch out for a loud click yay I love that noise so turn it over and again a loud click line them up Griffiths it would help there you go, let's clear away the debris. Now at this point, you may have noticed I haven't really over bone folded all of the edges, and that's because one of these needs to be folded back on itself. So choose your preferred sides. I love that side, and I love that side. So these are my, my outsides. So I have my pieces with my outsides, as if I was sandwiching them together. I'm gonna flip this around and join it. Now you'll see that the flaps then can fold back on themselves and this gives me the basis of my pocket. Oh, I missed a bit. This bit needs to be folded in. Sorry. So just to be clear let's talk through that again. I've got my good sides facing down, facing up. I flip this around I then close it so I've got my signature. I then fold this one down on itself. This one, because that's my pocket, needs to be folded in. Hopefully that's as clear as mud and I've not confused anybody about it. So that gives me that, that, that's the tuck and that's the pocket. Now something I found really easy to do here when I'm doing this is I just put a little clip. I use clips a lot. Like when I'm gluing stuff together, I very often use a bulldog clip to hold things in place just for a few seconds. So I've got this prepared. 
So then taking a little bit of my Fabri-Tac, now you can use whichever glue you choose, obviously. Um, I'm using Fabri-Tac because it's going to stick really quickly, just for this video. On the cardboard would help Griffiths. There you go. And press it down for a second, and this will give me my tuck spot. Now, I could have made this narrower, of course. Don't worry about that. I'm using this on the outside of my signature, so it can probably be slipped in anyway. Flip it over, open it up, and we've got the other one. So, take that off now. Again, put this in. The reason I use the Bulldog Clip as well as holding it together, it reminds me of stuff. So, it reminds me where the joins are going to be. So pop that in, press that down again, hold it for a few seconds, and as you can see, we've got the start of our page. Now, take the same bulldog clip, or small clip, it can even be a paper clip, could be a small clothes peg, whatever you wish it to be, just to hold in the position. Now, because it's going to be sewn through, I don't want to put glue down the join there, but I do want glue next to it, purely because I want to have a little bit of security in these pages. So I'm in a short line of it up there, line along the edge, line along the other edge, press that down and that means there's no glue in the central join, it's just at the base there. Take the clip off, flip it over and repeat that on the other side. Down there, down there, oh bit of a globby one there. Or as Gail will call them, I got a bit of a glue goober, Gail. I got a glue goober. It came across the ocean. Ah, you've invaded Britain with glue goobers. So press that down. Now it won't take long for that to stick. Now I always find, I don't know whether it's the fault with my cutting machine, but I always seem to go a bit off kilter on my cutting machine. Um, I think I'm due for a new one, to be honest. So I would just check that and just try and come in and trim that little bit of extra off if you've overlapped or moved it. As I said, unfortunately, I think it's actually my trimmer that's default and not human error. I've been having a trouble with it for a while. I'm not going to name the brand because that would be really cruel to a trusted brand. I think it's actually just, I've had it for several years and I think I may have stretched a certain part of it, maybe the wire. So I'm just giving this a little bit of a trim. Make sure you don't snip through your pockets, guys because that defeats the whole object. That one's fine, let's just move that down. Now, if you were gonna hit this with some vintage photo, you would have done that before you put all this together. It's now that I'll reach for a bone tool, get my bone tool on the go, and give that a really good, nice, clear press down on that side, on that side, and there you have it. That's one of Gail's P&T pages, or pocket and tuck pages. And I love this idea. And thank you, Gail, so much for sharing all your talent, all your work. I love it. So this can go into any journal I've got. I've got my nice little tuck pocket there, another top pocket there, another deeper pocket there. I can't get my fingers in it. Deeper pocket there, and another deeper pocket there. As I said, I'm probably going to be putting these in all of my journal signatures going forward. So... This was the original. I don't think Kale, Gail cut that scoop out on hers, but I did because I do that as a habit. So that was the original. Then I took it to the paper version. So you can do it with paper. As I said, Gail sewed along the sides on this. You could have sewed along the sides on that. I then took it one step further and I've done that like this. And I really love these. The reason I like this is if you've got two-sided card, the colours will always complement in the patterns because that's the way the designers do it. However, if I was doing one of these, I'd probably collage or do anything pattern-wise or even some of my artwork or stamping on the pages before I created it. So hopefully you like that. I really did. Once again, thank you so much, Gail. That was absolutely wonderful. One of the things I've taken off you. And I really hope that being inspired by you, I hope you don't mind that I've made this video, but I didn't get a chance to share it or send it to you because I was too excited. So this is you need to look for. Thank you very much, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. So goodbye from Kerry the Crafter.